Hey everyone, welcome to Team MSRV, where we show you life is not over just because you have MS for you or your caretaker. And that's why we decided to sell everything and enjoy life to the fullest. So follow us on our adventures for tips and tricks on how to cope with this disease on a daily basis. And maybe we could help each other. Hey everyone, another good episode for you this week. Mm -hmm. This week's topic is what do I do for my first visit to my neurologist? Yes. What questions do I ask? What do I need to bring? Where do I need to be in my headspace? So first of all is don't panic. <laughs> right. Yeah, because I know you're nervous, you're worried. Probably but... scared a little bit. Yes. And they're probably panic searching on Google right now. Yeah. And I agree with you. Relax a little bit. I know it's easy said and done, but it's it, scary. It, it we is. understand. But there was probably something you were complaining about to your doctor, mm -hmm. or maybe you had an MRI for a different reason or some other type of test that triggered your PCP to refer you to the neurologist, yeah. which is good because you want someone that's a specialist working on this kind of thing. So the dust will settle. Right, things will start to become more normalized as you start realizing there's a repeating pattern in there. Yes. It's just obviously, just like you, your first few months were like panic mode. Yeah. And we can have a cool video to help us no. like understand what the heck is happening. And I understand you're nervous, you're worried, you're, I mean. Your mind doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. So read from good sources like MS Society, like don't go to like a Facebook chat and yeah. talk to people like that because that will make you even more nervous I and agree. scared. I agree with that 100% just because we are in a part of many Facebook groups yes. just because we like to offer our experience and our help wherever we can help people, right? Yes. But it's very common to see on Facebook someone that does not have MS yet but they're nervous and they're asking all kinds of scary questions and other people that have MS will say, oh yes, that happened to me before and... Right, but the, the, there's one problem with that. So there's some people out there though that were diagnosed well before good medication was available, mm -hmm. right? Like you, in 2018, these new medications that almost stop the disease are available. Yes. And anyone diagnosed past that time is definitely in that realm of there's medications that can dramatically slow it down for most people. Obviously, nothing's 100%. Right. But in those groups, you may find people that are a little bitter sometimes, or they'll say that those types of things don't work for them, but they may work for you. So I would advise, like you said, good quality, and stay out of the Facebook groups until you know for sure what's happening. Yeah. You'll just do your own mental health a favor. Yeah, you won't get all panicky. Panic and yes. So another thing, don't delay the appointment like I did. Yeah. <laughs> so if they call you and they say, I have an appointment next week, take it. Make the time to go see your neurologist. Yes, because especially because if it is in fact multiple sclerosis or any other type of autoimmune situation or neurological situation, time might be a factor for you where more damage may be happening. So the longer you kick off these appointments, right? You gotta wait for results and then they make another appointment that books you out. And before you know it, it's a six to eight month process. All right, so now you got your first appointment, right? Your referral went through, you're going to the neurologist for the first time. You know that you're having either symptoms or some kind of test triggered this referral, yes. but you really don't have an answer yet up to what's happening inside of your particular situation. So there's some basic questions you should ask at that first appointment to help you understand and feel better about what's going on. And plus it lets the doctor know where you're coming from. So some of the questions you should ask would be, why am I here? Yeah, that's a good one, of course, right? I mean, you may know that you have symptoms of something and you don't know what's going on, mm -hmm. but maybe you don't know what's going on and the doctor or the neurologist will tell you exactly what's happening, the reason why they are seeing you. Yeah, so they'll have the results or the test result, the referral, and they'll be able to tell you what triggered what, yes. their appointment. Yes. So the next question would be, how long does it take to get a diagnosis? What are you going to do 
for me to get a diagnosis of yes. what's happening. Yeah, and that, which is a good point. Mm -hmm. Because they might be able to do one blood test and figure out it's something completely not MS. But they, they have to rule out a few other options that have very similar symptoms. Mm -hmm. And it's tricky. Sometimes it requires a spinal tap. Yes. Luckily for you, I didn't they were to able to, to knock out all the other options mm -hmm. and they knew you had MS. But some people, it's not as simple. Right. So they have to go through more tests. Maybe it's more MRIs. Maybe it's different types of blood work. Maybe whatever it may be, go with it. Do what they're telling you to do. Yes. So the next question would be, is this life threatening? Right, which you and I both know that multiple sclerosis, it's when you're under the care of a neurologist and treated for it, it's not life threatening. Right. Your neurologist assured both of us that it does not shorten your life. Mm -hmm. It affects the quality of life, which a lot of people call the pain in the butt disease. Yes. Right? It slows you down or it makes you forgetful. But the reason we say ask that question is because it'll make you feel better hearing it in person from someone that understands what's going on. Yeah. And I think that you should ask that even if you already know the answer, let them tell you that it's not going to shorten your life. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So for the first appointment, what should you bring? That's a good question because there is there are some items that you should actually have in your hand yes. in that office the first time you go. And that would be your med list. Without a doubt. Any medications that you're on have listed on paper the amount that you're taking and the frequency that you take it. Yes. They want to know that. And if you don't have it, it's going to be harder to tell them over the phone later. Right. And then what they do too, like for my neurologist, they made a copy of my med list so they had it on file. Which is also good because then once you have that, you can have a copy of that too. Yes. And you can carry it around in your purse or right. whatever, you know, for emergencies. Yep. That's a good one. Okay, so next, yep. bring a pen and a paper. And write notes. Yes. Take the notes. And if you're too nervous to write stuff, or like with your pen and paper, bring someone with you so you have someone to help you. I say you bring someone anyway, regardless mm -hmm. if you're going to write or not, because that person is listening from a different point of view. See, you're listening from the, this is happening to me point yes. of view, when I'm listening from a, okay, this is what can happen to her if this doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. So I think even if it's not a caretaker, yeah. it could be a relative, just someone that is there that's not internalizing what they're saying they're looking at it from an objective standpoint yes. i think that's very important so also bring a list of questions and then symptoms that you're having yeah that's funny we just gave you a list of questions that you can ask <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. and the symptoms if you haven't been following us or you're new to the channel welcome by the way um we have a video called symptom tracking and why it's important to track your symptoms yeah definitely check that video out and start tracking because it's going to make a world of difference of how your neurologist can treat you mm -hmm. and we explain all that in that video we don't want to go into all those details yes but it's good to have a list wait when you go to your appointment because yes. you have it and you don't go uh i don't remember you have the no, list I, of what's happening right i think i'm okay right You're right it's yeah. much better to list it saying you have tingling in your leg or your face whatever it may be forgetfulness there's a lot of symptoms that can be after that first appointment you know you're gonna have a feel for the personal relationship or the rapport you built with that doctor some people aren't comfortable with certain other people no matter the circumstances yeah, so if you don't like what the doctor says or you don't agree maybe there's nothing wrong with getting a second opinion correct some people get three yeah there's I, I think that if you don't feel good about what they're saying or may, the way they treat you or the way they, they they may be condescending or they may be acting like you're just a googler that knows the symptoms yeah you don't have to put up with that there's there's neurologists out there that understand and listen and they're hands-on and they care yeah so if you're not happy with that first one or you're not happy with what they said it doesn't mean that they were wrong though 
Correct. Because your second opinion may say the same exact thing, but at least now you know it wasn't a personal attack. Right. And now you can work towards finding what is wrong with you if, if they both prove yeah. that there's nothing and that's really. But after the first appointment and all the tests that they had you do, you may have MS. Yes, and if you do, they're gonna call you back in mm -hmm. for another appointment to follow up with all the data that they collected from the tests and they're gonna go over that and they're gonna to wanna to start discussing treatment plans. They're not gonna give you a medication on that second visit. No, they're just gonna give you uh, information like a pamphlet, so all the medication they think would work for and you. And it's a lot of and information. you decide which one you want. Yes, yeah, yeah. so you take that home, read them all, read them all front to back, even if it's boring or repetitive. It's just, you don't wanna make a decision ill-informed. You don't wanna say, I don't want this because of someone's opinion. You want to say, I don't want this because I know that it'll affect me that way, right? Or whatever. Rule out the pros and cons of each medication. And then it's up to you and your doctor to find the best one that works for you. And the first choice may not even be the best choice. That's true. Yep. But you have to start somewhere. So the first question you're going to ask will be, what kind of MS I have? And how long did I have that? MS. Yeah, and that'll be like an estimate. Like right. they can, they don't know exactly what day it happened, but they can estimate by the damages done. And the symptoms you were having. And how far along your symptoms are. Yeah. And then the next question you really want to know, and I think you would know this, but it's good to ask, are you an MS specialist? Right, because that's what they do all day long. Yeah, so mm -hmm. they, they are, they understand it and they study the MS in particular yeah because neurology is a umbrella mm -hmm. so that covers many disorders i mean parkinson's is a neurological disorder migraine like is one migraines there's, there's many things that can be that are not ms but are still autoimmune related and neurologically related so a neurologist covers a wide range yeah. of symptoms and problems and patients. Mm -hmm. An MS specialist, they, they're like a narrow beam of light that's specialized in the medications and new treatments coming along in different types of therapies and they're gonna understand it better than just a regular neurologist. That's true. I would compare that to your PCP, you know, your primary care doctor has a general understanding of your health but you go see an orthopedic for your bones. Yeah. Right? Like they understand your bones better than everything else. Sure. When your PCP might understand some bone stuff, but not nearly as much as the specialist right. would. So yeah. we just like to stress that, that the MS specialist is going to understand you better and that's all they work with all day long. So the next question is, what causes a mess? Yeah. Like what cause, like where does it come from? Mm -hmm. And also you might want to ask, how is it attacking your body? How does it work? That's what I forgot to say. <laughs> <laughs> so, but just because understanding that may help how you live your day-to-day -day life. That's true. Mm -hmm. I mean, once they learn that stress is one of the major triggers of symptoms, they're gonna realize that they have to back off on some of their responsibilities. Yeah. And that's, and that's very important to understand and appreciate. You think that when you have a mess, the stress won't, you know, slow you down, but you're gonna see that the stress, you'll think you have a flare up, but it's not really gonna be a flare up. It's gonna be like your symptoms are just showing up more. Ooh, another chance. Check out that video too. We have a video called Baseline Symptoms, mm -hmm. and that will help you understand that when your stress goes up, certain symptoms will pop up in a certain order, yes. and everybody's baseline symptoms are unique. Mm -hmm. It's like your thumbprint for you as an individual. Mm -hmm. So that's important to understand that. Track your symptoms and baseline symptoms, understand them. Yes. When do I call my primary care doctor, PCP? So that they told me, my neurologist told me, if it's just like general health, like if you have a sore throat or you have a, a pain in your arm, you call them, your primary care doctor. Right. And then anything MS related, or the best you could decipher it to be MS, mm -hmm. you would call, it's probably not your neurologist directly. You're probably going to talk to the nurse most of the time. Yeah. 
which is just equally as good. Because she's going to relay this to the neurologist and they're going to make decisions together. Yes. So it's very important. So a good relationship with the nurse is also essential. Yes. There's a lot of phone time with the nurse. Yes. And then finally, um, I like to ask this because you know I'm into supplementing. Mm -hmm. So ask the, the doctor or the neurologist if there's any supplements you should be taking. A lot of people, they don't realize it, but vitamin D is deficient. Yeah. Right? I'm not saying that's for you, but... It is a major problem with MS. I mean, it was for me like that. She says, oh, take this much. And then when she did some blood work, she's like, oh, take a little more. Take more. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. Right. Because if you have the proper minerals and nutrients in your body, that's just more resources for your body to use to fight. Yes. Whatever's coming. Whatever's in. happening. You want to give it the best tools. So I would say eat less junk food too, if it's possible, and more healthy food, meaning yes. less McDonald's, more salads. Yeah. Don't cut it all out, right? We're not, saying, good. <laughs> we're not saying no, no. turn into a vegan or anything like this, but but be conscious. Like, you know, make decisions with your meals. If you know they're unhealthy, limit how many or how much you're having that day. And it's a good thing too if you're able to try to keep your activity going. Your physical activities. Because my neurologist when I was like, Oh my god, where am I going? She's like, if you're active, you're going to be okay. Just keep being active. And that's true. I feel like you're doing pretty good. Um, but that activity also triggers symptoms sometimes. Yeah. So I wouldn't push too much during a diagnosis process, right? Like during this, what we have here, what we're talking about, their first few appointments, I wouldn't push too hard until you get it figured out. Yeah. It's going to be a roller coaster. You're going to be riding a wave of feeling good and feeling terrible mm -hmm. and then feeling good again. And you'll know what you need to do. Like you'll understand, okay, I'll push too much. I'm going to slow down and you'll know. Yeah. Oh, I walked for 30 minutes. Maybe next time I'll do 20 minutes. Yes. Just to, mm -hmm. to keep yourself under control. That's why you keep tracking your symptoms. That's right. Or your activities too. You could track that. That's right. And those are all helpful for you. I mean, exercise, we always say that's the whole point of our channel is to give people an outlet and a way to still have adventures. Yeah right because a lot of people they kind of they struggle with that balance of what stress is and how much they can handle and what they can put forth after their stress and it's always a an uneven assessment so after the appointment make sure you do all the tests that your neurologist is asking you to do don't wait so if they're asking for blood work do it mris do to it spinal tap and and like we already said i think we said this earlier in this video already that don't delay don't procrastinate don't mm -hmm. kick it down the road because even you following the, the the most recent appointments that you can it's still going to take a few months to get through the whole diagnosis process yeah so don't kick it down oh in two weeks i'm available oh i could do this three weeks from now because that's just going to kick your medication starting that much further down the road that's true yep. so that's that was a good point <laughs> Track your symptoms with like a calendar. Yeah, the way we, I mean, if you go back and look for that symptom tracking video, we teach you how to do it, how mm -hmm. to do it accurately and not go overboard. And we talk about all the benefits of that. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely, even if it's just a notepad, we find a calendar with the big blocks, right. the easiest. But yeah. even if it's just a notepad that you write the dates that you're having troubles, that's going to be valuable. Yeah. And then when you go to the knowledge, you'll have the date that when it happened. So she'll be How able to see. How long it happened. Yeah. 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 So check out that video because that's going to be helpful for you. Yeah. And it helps you predict your own near future too. Mm -hmm. Another thing to watch is your inflammation. Inflammation, what is that? Your lymph nodes, right? That all kind of flare yeah. up and it makes you feel groggy and crappy. Yeah. I mean, we have like a cookbook that will help you like stuff to eat that will help with the inflammation yeah ways to cook better better meal plans yeah. actually there's a, there's a few meal planning books that help you plan the week ms books basically that yeah. show you the best recipes that have the lowest amount of infl infl inflammatory foods yes yeah right so check that out in the description we already linked i think there's two or three of them down there that yes. we like yeah we really like those books and the, the recipes are pretty good and eating healthy too helps automatically happens with those books yes Okay, and then the next thing is watch for your stress. 
try to not stress out. Especially during the beginning process. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be hard because you'll have so much to do, but... Yeah, and, and what you mean, I mean, I think would say, like, avoid arguing, avoid being around people who are fighting because that's stressful just being in a room with people who are fighting like I cannot tolerate this I have to excuse myself I have to protect myself that could be your line yes right just because that stress coupled with being unmedicated still can really trigger your symptoms and make you feel like you're having a flare-up and there may be new damage happening you don't know because this you're not you're not medicated yet. you're not medicated so definitely do what you can, especially during the beginning process to reduce your stress. That's why we made this video, just so that you can understand that things will calm down, things will settle down. It's just a freak show panic attack right now for anybody who gets told they need to see a neurologist. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. It's scary. So, but we're there. Yes. We're your backup plan. And we're just, we've been there. You know how you feel. And this isn't like a scary video. We're not trying to create drama for clicks because you know that that's not us. No. There's plenty of that out there. Yeah. We just put the facts. So if you have any questions about anything we're talking about, comment below for sure. Yeah. And we're doing these videos trying to help you guys. Right. So yeah. like and subscribe. Yeah. Because we like you. We like you. <laughs> All right, you guys. Hopefully this video helped. Okay. See you guys later. Bye. Thanks everyone for watching. Use our playlist to watch our video in order. And the best way to support us is to like this video and subscribe to our channel and get notifications. Don't forget, 25% of any money ever earned on this channel will be donated to an MS cause of your choosing. As a team, we got this.